Hello, I'm Tony, and uh, today we're going to be talking about automating and reverse engineering cookie clicker. Well, uh, first thing I want to mention before we jump in is that uh, they save your state for your game in local storage instead of in the cookie, and I thought that was uh, a wasted opportunity. <laughs> but anyway, so here's Cookie Clicker. It's your standard idle game. Uh, the way you get you know, points or coins or gem rolls or whatever is you click the cookie. You get one coin. You, you do enough clicks and then you can start to buy auto clicker things and then it becomes a, uh, a standard auto click game. So what I thought I'd do was uh, I would uh, basically just kind of look around and see if I can't automate this a little bit. So first things first, since this is a DOM based game, all of this stuff you can just right click in any browser worth its salt and inspect the element and see that uh, we've actually got all these DOM names and things like that. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, automate one click here. So the ID of this thing is called uh, Big Cookie. So the way we, uh, the way we handle that is uh, document.getElementById and then we pass in that element name uh, what was it? Big and then capital C cookie. Yeah, and then it get, it fills in like a preview there. Yeah, let's zoom in on that. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've cho we've selected this DOM element and uh, we get this preview because this console is pretty sweet. So it shows us what we're what element we've actually grabbed with the holographics or whatever right there. Highlights. There we are. And uh, you can just say dot click, and when I hit enter, we get one click. Okay, that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, the only problem is clicking it is actually way faster than that. Like, sure, I can hit the up key and, you know, generate this, uh, this click as much as I want. But really, that's no automation. That's just one click. But what we can do in JavaScript is we can set interval, which says, hey, we want to run uh, this particular code, whatever is inside these little curly braces, on an interval. And that interval is whatever we type right here. So let's just say a thousand milliseconds because it's in milliseconds, why not? And uh, we'll copy paste that right in there. And then all of a sudden, now we've got ourselves a free cookie every second. Now, clearly you can do it a lot faster than that. And we will, we will, trust me. But uh, so here we have a minor automation script, and you can just take that, copy paste it in here whenever the page loads. But the problem with that is this console JavaScript that you've stuck in there, uh, it only runs uh, while the active page is up. If you refresh the page, all the JavaScript gets refreshed and uh, your automation script is hosed. But there is something we can do about that. So there's a, there's a little add-on in Firefox called uh, Grease Monkey, and there's an equivalent in Chrome called Tamper Monkey. And if you just install those little add-ons, you can inject scripts, JavaScript, onto any page that you want. You just define it inside there. So that's what we're going to do, is uh, I'm going to use my Grease Monkey add-on, and I've actually created a template for this just to, just to kind of save some time. So this cookie clicker automation script, uh, we've got, th this is, uh, th this is the, uh, Grease Monkey add-on here. You just say what website you want it to be on, and it uses wildcards too. So for this particular website, I just copy the URL there and say, hey, whatever you hit that website, I want you to run the following JavaScript. So that code we just wrote is basically this right here. So what I've done is to cache it, I've, uh, I've gotten the element by ID, the big cookie. I only grab it once, and then every time uh, that, uh, every time, let's see, 0.25 or sorry, 25 milliseconds goes by, we click on the cookie. And now we've got, uh, I believe I've saved this, so if I refresh this page, uh, we should be clicking like a madman. What's going on here? Save. Okay, right, I didn't save it. Yeah, there we are, clicking like a madman. So already, you could call this an automation and call it a day, but I wasn't happy with this. So let's jump in a little bit deeper. So uh, the next piece that you might uh, be interested in uh, automating out are uh, these little shiny cookies that show up every now and again that basically unlock a bonus mode. So what I've done for that 
is uh, I right clicked them, inspected element where they're on the screen, and I found out that those things all have a class of the name uh, of the name Shimmer. So I've basically done get elements by class names, and this gives us a list of the elements that have the class Shimmer on them. And uh, let's see, is it Shimmer click delay? 500 milliseconds, so half a second. Every half seconds, we uh, we go through everything we find in this list, as long as it's not you know null or empty, if it exists. We iterate through it all, and we click all of those. So bam, all of those bonus things that show up, we automatically go into frenzy mode and uh, collect all the cookies that way. Now, the hardest bit of this, and the most interesting part of our journey, is this last bit. Uh, this is some t I spent some time on this. I'm just uh, copy pasting it here, or having it prepped, uh, so that way I don't have to just write code in front of you. But uh, what this does is, on our buy delay, we go through and we find the most valuable, uh, the most valuable one of these buildings uh, at um, at any given moment, and we buy it. And we do that every. 10 minutes is what I've got here. And I like to break up uh, milliseconds, seconds, minutes, so it's easy to process what's going on. So uh, basically what I did is I just kind of simulated clicks on these. So I started by doing the same sort of thing I was doing, where you inspect the DOM and you say like, uh, you, you look at this and you see, okay, this has the class product unlocked, enabled on it. And we could sure, you know, try to figure it out from that. But I also noticed this. We've got this thing called uh, game tooltip dynamic, and then we've got you know, game objects by ID. So I fiddled around with that a little bit, and I found that the entirety of uh, of this game is actually here in JavaScript, and it's easy to look at. So the uh, window dot game is actually where the entire state of the game lives. So we can we can take a look at that, and we find that like the entirety, the full data structure of the game is just here in this window dot game that we have global access to. So you can say uh, after piddling around for a little bit, I was able to you know find that oh uh, there's a variable for how many cookies we have at the moment. So we can use that in our code if we want to. But more interesting, I found uh, game dot what is it? Uh, game dot objects by ID was that it yeah objects by ID and I found that all of these guys right here uh, they come with an ID so cursor is ID 0 grandma's ID 1 farm is ID 2 so uh, if I wanted to find you know if I wanted to find all the information about a farm including how much it costs uh, what's the you know bulk price for them like all the information and then even a uh, a little buy function that we can call on farm uh, is right here in this game object so let's talk about what I did in this automation script so what I do is uh, I start out every uh, every 10 minutes or so I go through and I set my highest value to zero, and the object I want to buy is set to null. So this thing right here, this real nasty looking code, is basically me uh, creating a for loop uh, to check all of the objects in the game, all the you know purchasable objects, and I just uh, go through each one of them, and I name it obj, so object, so it's easy to look at. And I say the current value, the value of this object, is however many clicks per second, uh, cookies per second you get out of it, divided by its price. And that will be the value. This is how we decide what the most valuable item to buy is. And then can we afford it? Well, does our cookies that we have currently, is that a bigger number than the object of the price? If we can afford it, and the current value is greater than the highest value we found so far. You set the object you want to buy to whichever place in the list we are in, and uh, we set the highest value to current value. And then we go through and basically iterate over every buyable object to do that. And then if we find one of those, like if there's at least something we can buy, so if this is not equal to null at the end of this, because remember it starts null, and if it finds anything that meets that little if criteria, then we can buy it. And we just click that buy function right on there that we found while looking in the uh, console. And then we even print out a console log. Now uh, this was just me being anal retentive. We could have said you bought a uh, you know cursor, you bought a grandma, but 
this piece of code right here is to say, hey, if the uh, if it starts with the letter A, just make this whole thing say an instead of just A. So that way it says you bought an antimatter condenser instead of you bought a antimatter condenser condenser. So Anyway, if I run this, uh, what I'll do is, instead of 60 seconds, because that makes for a terrible demo, uh, we'll say every five seconds we will uh, run this code and we'll buy the most valuable thing that we can afford. And we'll see how that goes. So let's, uh, let's refresh our page here. And every five seconds we should be buying some of these pieces. Huh? 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 Oh no, have I already run into some kind of problem? Did I make it too fast? Did I not save it? Cookie clicker automation. Okay, we saved that. What have I done wrong here? The buy delay, five seconds. I haven't changed anything as far as I can tell. I'm going to debug this, and then I'll get right back to you and find out what happened. Okay, welcome back. I found what was going on. Apparently it is a bug in uh, Grease Monkey where you don't actually get access to the window object. If you, if you want to access things that have been, like a modified window object from the page, you've got to do window.wrappedjsobject.game because game wasn't there originally in the window, but they, uh, the code we're going to be trying to latch onto added it. So wherever you see window, just switch it out with that window.wrappedjs object, and that should do it. So those two places, and all of a sudden, it should, like magic, oh well, now I'm buying every five seconds, I think. Oh, there we go. Am I buying every three seconds? Yeah, there it is. So you see that it finds the grandma's the best value proposition, and then it finds uh, maybe the cursor is the best value proposition, and so forth and so on. So right now I've got it to buy every three seconds. I told you five seconds earlier, but in my adventures I switched it to three. So you can kind of tweak that number as you see fit. Now next, I suppose, is figuring out when buying upgrades is a, is a good value proposition. But I'll leave that as a chore to you. With this, you can now automate pretty much any sort of DOM-based idle game, because they all go like this. You buy upgrades, you maybe click on something, or wait around, or buy units, or who knows. And, uh, as a bonus, if you uh, do this to Axie Infinity, you may find yourself being a millionaire one day. So, uh, congratulations with that. So if you liked this video, I'm not going to ask you to like or subscribe, because personally I don't care, but please tell me, uh, give me ideas for other things that you might want to see automated, because this is fun for me, and uh, I, I really desperately need a hobby. So uh, thanks for your time. I will talk to you later.